and welcome back to Reality with Reality Hub. Now, today's episode, we had three special guests. They fitted into my room with all that heat, and we had to have the fans on. We had Will Wallace. I don't think acting's about being a good liar at all. No. Blair Strang. I think you have to enjoy it, otherwise there's no point. Otherwise, you're just going to work yourself up every time you go. And Mike Edwards. I reckon everyone lives their whole life putting stuff on, you know, to, to be a certain right. way. Mm. Mm. But good acting is like actually ripping it all back to just stand there super honest. Rob and I had the the good fortune of having them in the room. Yeah, I mean this was a really cool one because obviously Steve and I uh, are in the acting world and we wanted to really just share and impart the amazing wisdom that our guests had, all the experience and yeah, delve deep into what is acting all about, like why do we actually do this? So all the practicalities of being an actor, but we also delved into the philosophy um, the human sort of aspect of it, the deeper sort of meaning. And because I took away this thing about connection, right? About actually acting is about connecting authentically. And then through that, you're telling a story, right? That's right. Yeah. That's right. And in true Reality Hub fashion, we talk about the things that matter to us in terms of mindset and what we do and why we do what we do. This is not necessarily uh, a podcast about how to be an actor, although there are moments where we talk about processes and sure, things that we sure. do as actors. Yeah. But it's really more about uh, the the real insight into living your life that we always talk about on Reality Hub. And I think you'll find that there's something in there for everyone. I agree, yeah. I mean, how could you not with so much talent, wisdom and experience in one room? Wow. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Wow. <laughs> I mean, I took away so much yeah, and learnt, learnt a lot as well. Yeah. So please welcome to the studio, Mike Edwards, Will Wallace and Blair Strang. Is it okay with you? (laughs) (laughs) You So many mics here, yeah. We are live around the 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 world. (laughs) Awesome. (laughs) Well, hey, thanks for coming into the studio, guys. Pleasure. Are we away? Yeah, we're away. We're away. Okay. Thank you. Are you sure we're away? It's as easy as that. Easing our way in. So why are we attracted to acting? I I was saying to Mike before, actually, (laughs) um, I got into acting because of Star Wars. I remember as a child- rolling around in, in the backyard in a cardboard box pretending I was my own character based on Boba Fett, like a bounty hunter. And now there's a TV show literally about the Mandalorians. Yeah, good story. Mm, yeah. yeah, that's We've well, cool. got the Star Wars shirt on. Yep. Don't embarrass me too much. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with Star Wars. <laughs> it's a great that's show. Star Wars yeah, 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 yeah that's cool. <laughs> but yeah, but you know, I, I was always attracted to film and I just wanted to be a part of film. That's awesome. Mm. I lived in an imaginary world. Like I remember um, I'd dress up like in tights as either Peter Pan or Superman all the time. And I and I, I distinctly remember being seven or eight, like kind of that age where it was slightly wrong to be in tights as Superman, <laughs> and being up a tree and my neighbours coming over and it was the first time that I kind of became aware and I hid up the tree. I, I didn't want them to see me. It was the first time I became aware of like this is not, not necessarily normal. But it was more, yeah, just an imaginary escapism. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, that's a bit like that's me. Cool. So that was the escapism mm, of yeah, being yeah, an, yeah. another character yeah. in another world. Yeah. It wasn't, and it wasn't about trying to act. In yeah. a very active imagination at that point or more more escapism? Nah, super imaginative. Like it yeah. was like literally I was there with whatever, mm. whatever was going on. I didn't even know acting was a thing. Well, that's what we want every kid to do though, eh? Because mm. we sort of want every kid to have that childhood where you're free to be – imaginative and have fun and play and some kids don't get it well i think they do but i think they lose it along the way when they become mm. adults for sure yeah but i mean for me i um i never forget when i was on stage for the christmas show and they made and i got the part of sultan in aladdin and these i had to say um you've got 40 days aladdin or whatever to you know I can't remember what he'd do at the time, but, uh, but <laughs> Sorry, you can but, remember those lines. Though. No, but but I remember that because <laughs> there's, like, there's two the, films the, too. The the, 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 um, the words made sense, yeah. and when I came out, they came out. They, there was an emotion behind it, and I'd never mm. experienced that. How, how old uh, were you? I was only like uh, six. Oh wow! And, and I experienced. And I thought actually that made sense to me, and so every time I was on stage because I was doing, you know, I did a show every year. Every time I spoke, the words that I said made sense. And I understood the intention behind the line, and then I, it, 
just acting made sense um, more than anything else I've ever done, to be honest. Yeah. So it was kind of that. That's when I knew that was it. That, that's really interesting. One of the things that attracts me about acting as an adult is that um, when I get a great script or a great line of dialogue, it helps me express an idea that I have that I feel like I can't express in my natural self mm, as right. eloquently. Mm. That's exactly right. Yeah, or in fact, it would be inappropriate to do. Yeah, just feeling more comfortable in something, in another skin. Yeah, to be able to express feelings that you possibly couldn't do as yourself. Totally. Yeah. 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 yeah that's nice. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. yeah, writers are always so much wittier and smarter than me. So it's, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a joy to say. I'm Absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah. so what is acting? I've seen you act witty. What, <laughs> what was that, Steve? So, what is acting? Is is acting storytelling? Is it connecting? To emotion, is it is it portraying the human emotion, or is it all those things? I'm so interested to hear what these guys say. Um, so am I. Well, I think it's first and foremost, um, it's telling the story, <clears throat> and then it's telling that story truthfully, and then I think then comes the character. So if you focus on always keeping the truth of the story, then – um, the acting will follow, and the character will follow, and that's what makes it so much fun. Right? Yeah, because you you're you're telling a story, you're telling a truth that you wouldn't normally probably possibly be involved. Well, in. truth, and I think honesty. I think acting's honesty, right? Yeah. Being honest to your own reactions to a situation or a given circumstance that might be foreign to my own, but how I instinctively respond in that moment, mm. and then that portrays the character. Yeah. And the, and I've found the more truthful I am to me and my own reactions, yeah. the more other people see. A different character. That's exactly right. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fun. Yeah, I, I always, I always like to think of the idea that um, people have this idea that acting is putting something on, mm. and I reckon, I reckon everyone lives their whole life putting stuff on, you know, to to be a certain right. way. Mm. But good acting is like actually ripping it all back to just stand there, super honest. Yeah, right. Know? And that's, that's exactly it. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because people know. I mean, I, I gather that people know when you're bullshitting, right? When you when you're faking it. So when you're coming from a truthful place, you have a deeper and more. Yeah, it, it's all about connecting, well, right? I think the camera sees it. Mm. It's like in film and TV, like yeah, the the camera is like almost the best lie detector in the world. You know, so so if, if there's not a real connection or something happening, mm. the camera reads it, and then the viewer is going to see that. And one one example of that, I think, um, I mean, one of my favorite actors is uh, was. Philip Seymour Hoffman, yeah. and uh, every time there was truth to his performance. Now, you look at him and you think, well, there's, there's not really much to you, really, to be honest, but every time his performance is so truthful, so honest, that you just literally couldn't take your eyes off him. And, the, you know, he was performing in movies with Joaquin and, and Tom Cruise, and, you know, they, these guys look great, you know, but you, I just couldn't take my eyes off him because his performance was so truthful, so honest mm -hmm. every time. Even if he was um, super vulnerable, it, it, and sometimes the most vulnerable, they're the ones that you, you kind of warm to the most anyway because they're, they're often, that's what you, you, f you feel for the, the weaker character, so to speak, with well, the vulnerability. It, mm. Well, vulnerability is like this, the, the universal, universal kind of aspect to everyone. I think that's what yeah. people key into. It's like when you show that, a character like you think of all the great kind of heroes or i think that's one thing that harrison ford did really well with all you know with han solo and um mm. indiana jones these characters were kind of bigger than life but they they were flawed and they had a that they had these different aspects to them yeah you know, and well, was that, like, that, that, that's like the mirror that people see like if you're if you're brave enough to show your fear mm. your vulnerability and your insecurity the audience goes oh that's me yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Humanity. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Spot on. yeah. Sometimes you hear people say, <clears throat> "I think people who don't really understand they say, oh, 'Oh, you're you're an actor. You you play roles. So you must be really good at lying. Oh you my must God. be. Yeah. You I'm, must be I am really the good worst at liar. Pulling the wool over my eyes. How can yeah. I trust you? You're yeah. an actor. So what do you say to that? Because I, I well, no, I'm literally like I'm the worst. I can't help smiling if I'm trying to like I cannot because I think acting is about truth. Mm. If you if you follow me, so I, you don't. I don't think acting's about being a good liar at all. No, no, I agree. Mm. Oh, that was a real quick answer, wasn't it? Yeah, it really yep. was. <laughs> I want to I'm really interested in what you think about that, Mike, because the reason I asked that question was because of what you said before about truth. Uh, I think um, I think a lot of 
the best liars in the world are it's it's um it's it's almost the thing that I was talking about before, a heightened imagination. Like they literally believe it themselves, which makes them a good liar. If you yeah. know what I mean, you, you think about ah, uh, it's delusional, slightly yeah. delusional. You know, mm. like I, unlike Will, I have the capacity to lie, and I can lie really well. But often it's like at the time I really believe it, and mm. then I look back and go, "God, I was fucking right." Sorry, I was. No, yeah, no, I was, this, you I can't was cast. Of, I was, full, I was of full of spirit. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. Full of it, you know. But it, um, but but what I but but what's really interesting is how honest you are in this moment. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you went, yeah. I mean, sharing that. That's yeah, pretty cool. That's yeah, it was. Yeah. I was thinking, Whoa, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Thank right? you for um, yeah sharing that. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And and are you more self aware with that now? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I've totally pulled back because I I realized my uh, power and able to man- manipulate people and that not a, not, not yeah. being a good thing. So I'll, yeah, because right. we talk Thank a lot you. about on our show, our superpower is is showing the truth of yourself. Of being authentic, right? Yeah. And allowing so that to... Your superpower is yeah. when you really know yourself. It's knowing yourself in such a grounded way that you become so so much more powerful, I think, as a person. Yeah. yeah. So, you guys, do you think that um, acting serves a deeper purpose of perhaps finding more about who you are and um, connecting on a deeper level? Can, do you see it as form of therapy or a cathartic... No. Process? I absolutely don't. No. Uh, no, the complete opposite. It is, <laughs> I think it should be kept in its place where it is simply storytelling. And therefore, mm-hmm. that's that's the enjoyment, that's the fun, and mm-hmm. you learn to play. I think if you start um, making it or putting those sort of um, pressures on, on acting, it, it you know, it, you, you start doing it for the wrong reasons and it doesn't become healthy. It'll become self-indulgent uh, yeah. as well. You know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Train, like actor training is not about therapy, you know. I mean, yeah. Therapy, I think, is something that every person probably should have, see a therapist on some level mm-hmm. at points in their lives and not be ashamed of that. But acting training and acting is not the place to do that yeah. because you can't, yeah. you can't fully portray a character if you're not mentally... Um, healthy, yeah, yeah. And, and ultimately, I mean, it's it's about the audience. Yeah. Like it's a classic thing. Like it doesn't matter really what you're feeling as an actor if you've made some crap choices and you're boring. Then it's not even a good yeah. thing yeah. anyway. Mm. So what? There's no point putting yeah. yourself yep. through. They, the they've tuned into you. They've they've mm. invested in you. They've come mm. to your play. Then it's up to you to to entertain them. You know. But, yeah. Um. It's funny you should say that. I'm so glad you said that, guys, because I once had someone approach me and say, hey, you should come and do these classes we're doing because they heard that I did acting too. Um, oh, people are getting great results. And I, Sorry, what? Oh, they're really changing. They're, they're just coming out of their shell and they're becoming better people. And I just went, oh, look, thanks, but I'm not here to do therapy with you, mate. Yeah. Right. Look, I, I think that, I mean, I, I, I do work at a university teaching acting, but I think that, we do create better people, but I think that's a yeah. byproduct of begin, beginning to understand yourself. Mm. Well, we trained at the same school, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and mm. I, I came out a better version of who I was when I went in, but that was just a byproduct. The school's like training or going to classes is not actually about therapy. You know, that's right. You do get to understand yourself. But that's not really the purpose. That's right. I mean, mm. life teaches well, you about yourself anyway. Maybe therapy is the wrong word. I think what you were saying about coming out of, as a better version because you grow in confidence, you grow in certain skill sets yeah. as, a per- as a development. Well, yeah. Or would I that mean, be a byproduct? Yeah, that's definitely yeah. a byproduct. But, um, yeah, I wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, I mean, mm. empathy is a big one you grow, grow in. Yeah, absolutely. Because you have to. Put yourself in, or or imagine a situation that maybe wouldn't be you, or yeah, yeah, because you're dealing with a range of human emotions. Absolutely. Mm. So mm. you need to be able to tap into those in order yeah. to actually we, be real and you have and to connect understand and yeah. understand them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The given circumstance. Mm. So let's talk about the motivation of why why people become actors, and although you guys have clearly genuine joy and love for it, I think you see other people trying to do something, and they may have may be coming to it from a perspective that's. Um, I don't know. Maybe they just want to be famous. Maybe they like the idea of what that would be like. And I'd love for you guys to talk more about everything that that entails. But to kick off with, are actors out there trying to become actors because they're smitten with a story and they want to express that? Or is there something else? Mm. Uh, There'd be so many reasons. Like there'd be a bunch of people. Like I remember being twenty and wanting to become famous. Mm. You know, I, I remember that. You know, mm. I remember seeing 
seeing this guy on shorty and going mm. fuck you know that jealousy mm. you have at 24 going oh why you know mm. why, him? It's, it's, why him yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm still <Okay>. asking <laughs> but you, but you know I, like i i grew out of that you know and yeah. um and you you let that go so it's almost like it you, you don't know what you don't know at the start yeah, yeah. and sometimes it's chicken rig right so sometimes they go into it wanting to be famous or you know be a kardashian or whatever and and they end up finding a genuine love for it. Like I, I talked about loving film before, and there's a whole generation of our um, colleagues that we went th- through school or training with that all we do is we relate to each other in film quotes. <laughs> you know, like we love film, we love yeah. actors, and we love we talk mm-hmm. about it, and we're obsessed by that, and that was our driving force to get into it. And I think the more you do this, the the more you find that love. So it can start out certainly as that selfish kind of thing, but <laughs> this job ain't going to make you famous <laughs> most of the time. You know, you're going to be very lucky to be like a journeyman actor who who goes from gig to gig. You know? mm, yeah, that yeah, that's yeah. probably. I mean, that's success in my book, right? Me too. So yeah, every, everyone sitting in this room, this is what you know. Success to me is is doing it still and doing still doing it, it at still our doing, age yeah. on a regular basis. Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes I think we see actors that achieve high levels of fame and and at the point at which when we were younger um, and we thought, oh, wouldn't it be great to be that famous because I too had those moments as well. Oh, yeah. And I have to say, to my shame, I once said it out loud to <laughs> to a girlfriend of mine in the 90s and I said, what do you want to be? And I didn't really know. And I went, I just want to be famous. And, Respect. and the look on her face because she was such a grounded woman. And I went, oh, that's fucking wrong, isn't it? It's just wrong. <laughs> well, okay, let's let's I shouldn't, I shouldn't, your current partner. Let's dig, let's no, dig no, deeper dude. then, because wanting yeah. to be famous comes from, or even wanting to be on stage in front of people, comes from a place of insecurity of yeah. trying to trying to be validated. Yeah. yeah. So the the, mm-hmm. the wish for fame, yeah, maybe in a lot of actors are quite insecure people. You know, they'll, mm. they'll be mm. great at what they're doing, but they'll come off and go, "Was well, okay," and they'll they'll oh, need people to tell them. Yeah. So. Mm. How, I mean, how much is it ego driven at that point, and how much is it actually doing it because you love acting and you love? Well, I, I don't know. That's what I was yeah. just questioning that, like the idea yeah. that subconsciously we might not even know at the beginning why we're there, doing it. Well, there's, a, yeah. there, there, there's I mean, a really there's common. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Blair. That's right. Um, there's a really common thing that that pretty much every actor is insecure. And That's right. like if you watch mm. if you watch enough interviews, I was talking to you. Before, yeah, Robin. we were talking about this earlier. Um, yeah, right. so I think it's actors on actors. It's a um, Vanity Fair. Uh, some, I think there, there's a series of them on YouTube, right. and I've yeah. been watching them recently just to try and find quotes for the kids. And you know, almost every single actor talks about their insecurity. You know, and, mm. and I remember reading Anthony Hopkins' bio, and he talks about being insecure and thinking mm. that you know most actors are, and so. Uh, it's, yeah, the, mm. it, the insecurity might drive us to to want to be or to do something significant or to be out. Playing a character often allows you to experience and be be kind of larger than what we are. Wow, in, yeah, our, in well ourselves, put. maybe. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I am. Um, I, I mean, I certainly started off with you know the love of acting, and it never really left me. Um, and even when we did our first show, True Love Stories, remember that? Like that's I, when I first started with you. I right? do. Mike, I do, Mike. <laughs> And uh, we had a yeah. great time on that playing army soldiers, um, <clears throat> but uh, and even around that time, it was still for me about acting. I mean, I've been doing theatre. We played to about five, and it was terrible. But I still, <laughs> there was you know the guy had it was at different port uh, twin cinemas and. There was a guy there with a tray of line red, and he was farting all through it, you know. So, it was, it was, but but I, I, when I got to Shorty Street, I felt that I, I you know, because of the beast of Shorty Street is what we you know know it to be. You particularly at that age, I, I felt that it shifted from that to it became ego driven, but because of the nature of that beast, yeah. And it wasn't until um, there was a couple of things that ch- where it changed for me it was with Stuart Devaney's class where he taught us about detaching your ego and mm. then of course leaving Shortland Street and um, finding out what 100% <laughs> rejection is when you go to audition <laughs> 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 How old were you at Shortland Street? I was 
uh, we finished True Life, and then I you were straight on. I straight yeah. on. You would have so been twenty two or something. Twenty two, like yeah, twenty yeah. two. What so, a great see, age! You guys, to you guys caught up in a day. did True Life stories as well because I yeah. did an episode of that as well. Did you? Uh, Jess, Jess Hobbs directed the episode. Who's now dressed, directing the Crown? I know, she, she, isn't she? Yeah, yeah. amazing. Killing yeah. it. Who was directing us? I can't remember the guy. It was a guy. Um, uh, I forget his name. That's right. Have a think about Mike was the lead. And I was his best friend. Charlie. Charlie DeSales. <laughs> oh, That's right, Charlie DeSales. You yeah. still seem very proud of that. Yeah, and I was his best friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was so bad. I remember, actually, that was one of the first things, because I used to love it, and it was the first TV job I had. And I remember watching it back, and it was, and I and actually remember thinking, God, I suck. Yeah. <laughs> like, just trying and pushing too hard. And it was yeah. that that made me want to go to drama school. Right. Because yeah. I right, thought, right. I don't know how to do this. It's oh, uh, yeah, it's horrible watching yeah. yourself the first time on television. It's absolutely awful. Absolutely, there's no question about it. You don't you you often your worst critic, but the first time because you don't you don't have the technique. Um, you 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 know you're over the top. Oh, Everything trying. is too big. Uh, I mean, my first um, block on Shauna Street. I remember I watched it with Angela Dotch in, in the little viewing room. <laughs> she was sitting on the couch. I walked in. I said, "Oh, sorry, I was going to watch some of my stuff." She goes, "That's okay. Well, let's watch it together." I went, "Oh god, okay." <laughs> so she'd been on for a couple of years, and I started watching it, and I literally jumped. Went, "No!" because I got such a shock. <laughs> jumped over the back of the couch, and she said, "It's all right. It's all right. We'll just look. Let's go through it." It was. I thought I'm fired. I'm fired. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> so look, I'm gonna. Um, I'm going to say that I think acting is important to humanity because it's such a part of the stories we see on television and theatre. And, and I, uh, if we go right back to uh, perhaps tribal times where we might imagine that someone would um, hold hold a story to a group of people around a campfire, it's important in the way that we talk to each other as communities. Um, well, you know, there's a theory that going to the cinema, right, that the flicker of the – the projector on the screen is a, is a similar to the flicker oh. of a, a flame in a campfire. So we get this collective experience. We go to a theatre, we sit down, and we watch. Mm. You know, and, and, oh, never, and, it go, and it harps back knew. to a time oh. when someone mm. would tell a story around a campfire. Yeah, it's cool. I've never heard that. Mm. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, it seems to Makes flicker sense, at the though. same rate per second or something, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's because wow. it's hypnotic, right? Excuse me. Yeah. yeah. Will, about that question um, of seeing yourself in rushes and stuff. You yeah. once told me if you could go back uh, and tell yourself something in time, yeah, it would be to take notice of what you were learning. Do you right. mind telling us that? I've actually got that question for you later, oh, but right. it just came up now. So, just um, yeah. So I did this actor training in the nineties with a woman called Vicky Nutzes, and we would record. She would record two cameras on each actor, and you're meant to go home and watch it every every week. You'd, bring your VHS tape back in those days and she put it in your record and you'd go home and watch it and come back the next week. Well, I never watched them because I hated watching myself. But if I would say something to myself now, I'd be like, watch them mm. and because I'd have learnt much faster. That's right. Go, go through the pain. <clears throat> go through the pain. You've got to put, you've got to rip the Band-Aid. <laughs> yeah. You've got to watch yourself. You've got to watch yourself. Yeah. Yeah, and, but, you know, because we, we see ourselves and we go, oh, I, I look nothing like Brad Pitt. <laughs> you know, <laughs> or whoever you idolize, yeah. right? Yeah. It's like, yeah. oh. Because yeah. we, we, our eyes are drawn to all our flaws that we look at in the mirror. But you've got to remember that when people are watching us, when I say us, at, you know, the screen, they're not looking at the flaws. No. Yeah. Mm. They're looking at the character or they're looking at whatever. Mm. So mm. we see all the bad points. We don't see the good yeah. points. And you've got to start training yourself to see the good points and also see the bad points and, and, and get rid yeah. of those too. Because, Blair, you mentioned that yep. we're often our worst own worst critic, right? That's right. But, yep. and, but it's also very important as you're sharing – that to you need to actually watch yourself because that's your craft. You need to actually well, just to yeah, follow yeah, on from that and, and um, see what see what works. Yeah. Sorry, uh, sorry. After that, you know that incident with with um, Angela Dodgson, I literally did force myself to watch because I knew that uh, you know I needed to do that. Yeah. And I knew, like one of the scenes, for example, was a kissing scene, and yeah. it, it just looked like you know it was just me leaning forward with my head, yeah. and it just didn't look like sexy at all. So I I said. I've got to do a good um, on-screen kissing scene, otherwise Ooh, I'm literally so going to be fired. Plenty of practice on that, right? So I, I, I literally <laughs> he came to me. And <laughs> yeah. to yeah. No, I literally practiced on myself in the mirror. Right. <laughs> I'm not joking. There you I go, folks. Acting I, tip one hundred one. No, but I thought if I could see myself do it and lean in with my body, then I can actually. <laughs> well, so I was literally. Like, but the, my, yeah, yeah. It That's sounds. A true like, story. It sounds. I'm a dad's place. It's, <laughs> 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 it, so, it sounds I, it sounds it's awkward it's and real, terrible, but yeah. But often the, ca the the way the position of a camera sure. or, or the way things are, 
Like if you watch, <laughs> if you watch short as this is a great, uh, you know, by the way, like I think short and straight is like the Olympics of acting, like the, the speed at which you work, it, it requires a huge amount of skill to be any, any level of good on the show. Like it's incredible. It's a great show yeah. considering how fast it's shot. Right. And, um, but if you watch when people going for the kiss, the, the experienced ones, they go and they tilt their head and they go in camera, <laughs> camera side. Right. <laughs> right. They get the camera. Yeah. Because they understand, they understand the position, yeah. you know. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, and you'll get and Mike's laughing because he does it. <laughs> he's like, he knows exactly. Where he's a camera <laughs> slut. <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of Shortland Street and and fame, um, have because it's something that it leads to uh, a lot of notoriety trouble. and trouble. <laughs> and trouble. Mm. Um, have you seen people handle fame well or poorly? And really interesting sort of stories about. Yeah, that. me both. <laughs> It's actually, I've got a question on that one for you later, actually. <laughs> well, oh, you can answer it if you like. No. Do you mean just general fame or do you mean like yeah, just yeah. short Have you seen particular? fellow actors um, really I've, fuck that up or actually really do it well? I've, I've seen people, and I think we do it when we're young. There's a thing that happens when you're on the telly, especially in New Zealand, right? While you're on, everyone loves you and you get all the invites and everything's really cool. And then as soon as it finishes, that kind of stuff stays around for a little bit. But it's about three months later, everyone kind of forgets who you are. And you've just mm. become, hey, did we go to school together? You know, you just become like someone that's vaguely recognizable. I recognize you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so when you're young, you kind of buy into the hype of it. And as you, as you mature, you go, actually, this is just another high in between the, the lulls. Mm. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it, it's sure – you know, Sean Street back in the 90s was, we didn't have internet. We had that show, we had Paul Holmes, and that yeah. was, you know, people sitting, yeah. up, <laughs> people sitting down for dinner. Oh, look, when you were on mm. was probably, the hi- I think, the height of that. Around that time. And, and there was no Instagram. Nothing. No, no, no other show. So it was it was a pretty crazy time, you know. There's there's no question about it. And you, Will's right. You had all this these wonderful things happening for you, which, uh, you know, I have to be honest, it, it made your head swell and think that you were – Probably a bit better than, well, a lot better than what you really were. Uh, there was also, you know, you had, um, you know, lots of jealousies from 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 Kiwi males, who, you know, who didn't, yeah. didn't appreciate that sort of, you know, well, the that way, sort of attention. The way, that and the, um, and sometimes you'd react accordingly. Um, but as you um, as you get older, that that you know that changes. But uh, in terms of, I don't know. The, I mean, Shirley Street fame. Uh, you know, kind of can mess with you a little bit, and it doesn't really kind of. I still get it, to be honest. Yeah, I was going to uh, say yeah, people yeah. would still know. Who yeah, you yeah. Are. So yeah. It, it, I mean, in this country, it hasn't really left. Um, it just it's just watered down a little bit, and every time mm. I appear, you know, yeah. somewhere, oh, absolutely. Then, you know, every now and then, it, well, it resurfaces. Well, you know? It's 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 whenever you do any other job, they want to know the Shortland Street credit before anything else. If yeah, you do a stage so. play or you do another show, yeah. they want to list the Shortland Street credit yeah. first. Because that's how that's how important the show is in the psyche of the country. It's that's right. Yeah. So yeah, it's um, it's an interesting beast. But it changed for me. That's what I was going to say. It changed for me. I guess as I got older, and also you know, on a personal note, when you know my son came into my primary care. So when mm. he came into my primary care, and uh, he's this is you know about ten years ago, everything changed, and I didn't really care about that stuff anymore because I had to you know yeah I had to you know put him through school, put his you know get his uniform, get his get him to sports and all that sort of stuff. Make his breakfast. And make his breakfast for the whole thing. Yeah. You know, his dinner. So it yeah. was it was like that stuff just kind of went. But uh, certainly, it, kids are the great. Like level equalizer, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. So that's yeah. I don't really care anymore. No, yeah, so yeah, it's very hard. No? Mike, you're very quiet on that one. You must have a good Any, story to yeah. tell. Oh, no, was, on that. no, it's just just interested to hear. Yeah, yeah like I knew Blair would be still be recognised everywhere. I um, okay. I don't know. I think just in general, a lot. Uh, it's important for actors to realise that the fame is not them. It's the that's right product of doing the job do you know what I mean yeah. and I think mm. it's, yeah. it's not the actor's fault so much because mm. the public treat them so full on oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. so everywhere you go so you're getting treated like this so you feel like it's you mm. but then you've got to make the lump jump in your head and go oh it's it's actually not me it's just because I'm doing this thing so yeah. you don't take it I think, and, and, and I think yeah, and I think you, you, you get that as you get old like mature and yeah, you kind you of understand that yeah. but you do you. but it's you that know? whole thing of like people think they know you, but they don't really oh, know absolutely. you. They recognise you yeah. because you happen to. Oh, you wouldn't believe the, the number of un- awkward hel- um, 
es- uh, elevator kind of conversations. I'll be like, hey, man, how's it going? How you been? Good. Good. I've been, I've been good, thanks. <laughs> yeah, what's yeah. been done? Oh, you know. <laughs> and, and you know that they think they know you from school yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. You, you, that's a similar thing that I get because they don't quite know. Yeah, that, they yeah. Recognize you. Right. Yeah. And, and, you, and after a while, they kind of, kind of, they realize they don't know you, and it yeah. just the conversation Apparently. stops. It's like, and then the elevator doors open. Like, well, have a good day. Yeah, you too, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, and, but I do quite like the um, when they believe the story, like because uh, I was obviously. Um, villain. So you know, I, I got. I remember a lady giving me a croissant once at a bakery and just going, "You are a horrible man." <laughs> yeah. And, she gave it to me. and you know, to be fair, you take that all day long as opposed to someone going, "You're a shit actor." Mm. <laughs> um, Good point. Good point. Now you may you may want to cut this out or not, but I was um, it's endoscopy when they stick a camera in a private part of your body that to have a look around. Yes. Yeah. I was I was getting one of those once. Um, for a general kind of look around, and I was lying down. It's not a particularly kind of fun thing to be having. You used to work, and there was a, the, 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 the there was a there was a female assistant there, and just as it was happening, she went, "I really love Step Dave." <laughs> and I, just went, <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, I was, yeah, I'm really happy." Like, could you not have talked about that at this time? Ah. Well, can you open the door for some ventilation? It's such wow. a whole little yeah, studio, cool. this yes. one. Yeah, yeah that's cool. cool. Look, I'm going to jump straight to a question I had for Blair later. Okay. And because it's about this and seeing as we were talking about it. <clears throat> and um, I've been around you when you when you get recognised and you handle it really well. Even as These people, days. Yeah, right. <laughs> even as people interrupt your night out. And I know because I've been having nights out with you and friends and they, they come and go, oh, hey, bro. And, and you know, they want to spend time with you. And, yeah. and I sort of step back and I go, <clears throat> But then I've kind of watched you do it so many times, and uh, I just am I'm amazed how you ha- handle it so well. And I can't imagine a time you've ever handled it badly, because I see you you're so practiced at it. Why do you do that? Why do, Why do you handle it so well, Matt? Uh, well, um, my attitudes change a lot towards it. Um, one because, uh, you know, back in the old days when I was younger, I, I, I probably, you know, I was. I'd probably think I was God's gift, to be honest, hmm. uh, particularly with that amount of attention. Um, and as I got older, and as I said, parenting um, has kind of changed my attitude towards it. And also, to if they've come up and said hello to you, and they've had the confidence to come up and say hello, I genuinely think, well, I've, I, I have no problem with saying hello and asking about them and, and, and you, know, you know a few questions as long as they're not being rude. And if they are being rude, I just say now, <laughs> hey, listen, you know that's inappropriate, or I try and take the aggression out of it. Um, back in the old days, um, you know, when you're, <laughs> I tended to, um, you know, if someone came at me pretty hard, I'd, I'd have to go back just as hard, which didn't do me any favours, to be honest. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so you've gotten good at it through trial and error. Yeah, yeah. and then uh, you know, th- some pretty public, um, embarrassing moments. So, uh, and not and not only that, it was it's more. Um, it, to be honest, it's being a parent. It's uh, being a full-time parent, focusing on my son, and that's all I really cared about. And because that happened, everything else kind of changed for me, um, you know, how I treat people as well. And mm. and so um, most of the time I, I have no problem with people coming to say hello. I kind of say, well, it's nice you've said hello. It's really cool. But, but do you think there's, the, there's an aspect of it that, like when they recognize you, it actually there's a bit of joy in their life from it. And yeah. it's like we, we don't have much, but – Actually, there's the little bit of joy you can spread. If they've if they've been know? yeah, if, as I said, if they've had the confidence confidence enough, even if they've had a few to come and say hi, then come yeah, on. yeah, you yeah, know, Just in, in thinking about that, it's one of the things I often wish that everyone had a chance to experience. Like when you got yeah. a little bit of celebrity, everyone just treats you a little bit nicer. Yeah, like mm. you know how you go, you go you go to a dairy and people are flat, or you go to a bar and people are flat. When you have a little bit, everyone's on their best behaviour and right. like. I wish everyone got to experience because you get to experience a really yeah. good side of humanity. Like That's everyone right. just being yeah. awesome. It's like Christmas all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. Chris Hobbs used to call it the magic powers. <laughs> the, the spray on. Ah, the, the, the spray on Frank. As soon as he'd fly in from LA and the air host, he'd say, Oh, you're that guy from Sean Street. He goes, Magic powers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, love I love Chris so much. <laughs> okay, look, I do want to know though if um, you see. Hierarchies of egos on set, uh, like like from from the different positions that people hold. 
that whole working environment, mm. which we see in ordinary offices and stuff, where you know there's the top dog. I think it exists on set too, does it? Do, do, do you mean within acting or within like the Probably whole? Probably between the whole combination. I don't. No, I, I don't think so. I think most most of the people I get to work with are all like how everyone in this room is right now. Like everyone's really genuinely wanting to have a good time. There are, I mean, it's like anything. There, there's uh, the assholes in every job, right? And there are a few people, but they don't tend to get as much work. Mm. You had a good time on Ladies Night, didn't you? Let's talk about that. Oh, Blair's <laughs> Trang. Blair's <laughs> Trang. Blair's Trang. <laughs> what does that mean? Yeah. Tell us more. What, what does that mean? Tell me more. Tell no, me. you don't have to. You don't. I don't, <laughs> even, know, I don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah, okay. you know, the only, oh, you when I, when I got in trouble with when we were rehearsing. Yeah. Yeah, I was oh, going to say, the only, the only people that I can think of that were... Um, Really full on, were American people that are coming down, that yeah. were leading their shows That's, down here. Yeah, I, actually, you, you're you're one hundred percent right on that. Yeah. I've you know you, you play the minor roles for these yeah. for these guys yeah. or, or guest roles for these guys, mm. and there is a real sense of entitlement. Yeah, they are wankers. Oh, um, I was going to bring that up. So I thought it might be an American thing Absolutely. more so than a local yeah, yeah, yeah. Kiwi New Zealand film. When, yeah, yeah. Well, like, I, I don't want to name names, obviously. No, but, of course, but, of but like it's, I, and I don't know whether it's their industry and the way Americans have to fight for their position and really assert their dominance in the world, which we don't kind of have within our culture. You know, yeah. we, don't have, we don't have a I am kind of situation. Mm. Well, we're we're all competing for the same jobs mm. all the time. Right. Especially as we get older, we're, now we're now we're um, yeah. in, in the over forties, and you audition against the guys I lo- we looked up. Just you and I left, bro. Just you and me, bro. <laughs> More slowly no, but, but 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 you know what I mean. Like we we don't Kiwis in general downplay. You know, whereas Americans yeah. really put themselves. Yeah. In. So when they're stars, like I remember, it's it's I've, there's been two that I can think of that were just extreme, like complaining about the size of their trailers, right. yep. kind of styles. Wow. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's that kind of thing, right? Too many yeah. yellow M and M's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I, but but I but, but then you but then you work with other like massive. I worked with Tommy Lee Jones on this film, right? And he was he he didn't tolerate fools, but he would he ate he ate lunch with us every day. He sat down at the table. He was congenial, like he was a mm. he was a good yeah, guy, true, and he's true. a massive star, you know. Like yeah. it's not it's not across the board, but yeah. I've I've worked with guys like what you're talking about. Keith, with Kiva Sutherland was the same, he was a real good guy. awesome dude, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. so, you know, who knows. Yeah, but uh, but then they, I guess, they're only fighting for what's in their contract, maybe, or or what they're used to. And we we we're used to our system and our the the way we work. And we, it's a real collaborative art form here. We all work together with the crew, mm. with everyone, to make the best product we can. I think everyone's pretty reasonable in this country. Yeah, I, I haven't come across <clears throat> anyone that I've. Kind well, of to use a, a like a business term, uh, a corporate term in terms of hierarchy, it seems to me. Tell me if you agree that being on set in New Zealand and New Zealand productions, and probably because we're such a small country and everyone knows everyone, yes, that the hierarchy is a what you might call in a business sense a flat hierarchy. There might be someone who's in charge, but it's just one person, and you're one reporting stage from ev- from that one person. You don't have yeah. to feed up through it. It's like they'll talk to you because it's flat. Mm. And yeah, that's really yeah, nice. It's, yeah, like, yeah. Mm. that's right. Is that egalitarian yeah. or something? I'm not yeah, egalitarian. Sure. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Big words there, guys. <clears throat> big, big we words. try to use the Mike big and words I got confused <laughs> on reality. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I want to bring it back right to the the very beginning with the casting process, the audition process. So what do you guys think about the whole audition process? Any tips, anything <laughs> anything you do special or, you know, any sort of routines you go through or is it just – I mean, we almost have different well, preparations. I have, I have a question. Do you guys enjoy auditions? Yeah, that's I, I a really do. good question. I do now, yeah. I do. Yeah, I, I, do. do. I love mm. them. And, and I think you have to change your mindset about that. You've got yeah. to – you've actually um, – you know, there was a, p- a period there, particularly uh, after Shirley Street. Before Shirley Street, I had no fear. No. Yeah. Because I had nothing to lose. Yeah. After Shirley Street, lots of fear, lots of desperation. And, and something to prove, and, and right? Some, yeah. And it was, it was, I just couldn't get anything. And I know it was because, you know, Shirley Street, but I, it was, it just wasn't happening for me. And then um, when I, um, it was actually Stephen Lovett. Um, oh, when, yeah. when he kind of, his but Stephen, pros- I think, is one of the actors of his generation, too. He's yeah, he phenomenal. absolutely is. But I just think the way um, he said, that just you're getting an opportunity to perform, 
enjoy it. I know it can look feel like a sterile environment, but enjoy it. And as soon as I change that shift, and as soon as you walk out, it's gone. Yeah. All of a thing, all of a sudden, things started changing a little bit. Yeah. So I, I think it is a. I think you have to enjoy it. Otherwise, there's no point. Otherwise, you're just going to work yourself up every time you go. Yeah. It's a waste of time. What do you want to say? Yeah. What about you, Mike? I know. I think you. I think Steve mentioned to me that you might have some kind of insight and wisdom <coughs> oh, of how I've got no wisdom, mate. I, I, <laughs> oh, no, you do. You do, <laughs> oh, yeah. Mike. Do you want? Do you want to know? Uh, do, you want, do you want the question I've got for you for later? Okay, because I, I I think this speaks to this. Okay, <laughs> you said something to me recently. I had the pleasure of working with you on set, and you said to me something about auditions, which really opened my mind. Uh, okay, I, I'll, I'll, I'll say talk about auditions. It might be the same thing. I, I don't know. Okay. I, I recently, um, there were two things that I figured with auditions. Um, and the first was, uh, it was a realization that, that the part was mine to lose rather than, mm. rather than one to win. And so mm. I'd go in with this attitude of going, oh, I can't wait till they see me because it'll sew it up, <laughs> you know, kind of style, <laughs> yeah. which is not so much an arrogance thing, but just a... But it, it leads to it, relaxation. It, it allowed me to sit in, yeah. in my flawed self, you know? Yeah. I thought, oh, all these shit things that I am are, are perfect. Yeah, nice. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, and the next thing that, I, that I'd that i started doing, which really works, and this, um, was taking time. So, like, I'd go in and I'd, I used to go in and I'd go, hi, and I'd try and be nice, you know, because you try and be nice to people and go, hey, having a good day and talk and stuff, and then they go, in action, and you say your first line, whereas now I go in and I just carry, because our job is just to do the role. So I'll go in and yeah. I'll just carry whatever I'm carrying for the audition, then they'll go in action, and I'll just take the time that I need and even make up a few lines before I even start. Mm, mm. Because once they say action, it's yours. And as, as soon as I gave it that time to have the space, it just... That just changed heaps. Yeah, well, that's spot great. That's great. Wow. Yeah. No, that's that's true. I agree Thanks for you. sharing that. Yeah, again. thank yeah. you. That's really <laughs> nice. Yeah, <laughs> I, I agree a lot of people that. will get I a lot out of that. that. And, and yeah. I think uh, I remember having conversations with um, with actors that be like, "Oh, this that casting agent hates me," or blah blah blah. And I'm like, right. they're not going to waste. They're not going to waste a 15 minute slot, which is really valuable in their day. That's There's right. a certain amount mm -hmm. of budget that they've got to cast a, f a few days to bring people in. They're not going to bring someone in they don't like mm -hmm. or don't respect, you know? And, and, and it's such a good thing to say that, that it is ours to lose because whenever you walk into that room, they want you to be the one. Yeah, right. yeah, they're not like right. what, they're not that's waiting so for you to I walk in and go. Yeah. Oh, I fucking hope he sucks. Yeah, yeah. That's right. that's <laughs> right. Right. But but actors so, think that mm, you know, yeah, there's yeah. like, uh, which is bizarre, right? You're already part of the twenty people who are there today oh, being considered absolutely. for the role. Right. You're in the top twenty. That's yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. No, please, well, we're also like, winning by attrition, though. You know. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Why? Well, not twenty anymore. I just, love that. Just, if they just keep staying overseas, yeah, yeah. Well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if any of those people that I was competing with in the early thousands come back, I'm, I'm screwed. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm hanging in there for dear life. Perseverance. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, what do people getting into the industry fail to understand? I think that it's a marathon and not a sprint. I oh. think that they, I think that they think that everything's going to happen fast, and that what you need to, and for, you know, for for there are a few people like you know, like that young guy um, doing Riverdale. Oh yeah, you know, like it will happen, and mm. it will happen quickly, and 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 there'll be that kind of um, speed. Yeah, but ninety nine, oh nine thousand times, you know, it's going to take time, you know, and yeah. and take your time and just. Enjoy the ride and treat every job like it's your first one and it's your last one. Uh, you know, like yeah, like and enjoy. Yeah, yeah. Like if I could go back and say, God, I've, I've I've like been thinking about the next job while I've been shooting jobs. Oh, this is going to be the job that gives me the better job. Just enjoy that job that you're mm, doing. That's right. Love it. Enjoy the experience, and you know, and have fun. I literally say this could be as good as it gets. Mm, right. Every, every time. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Nice, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think it's. Uh, if I'd say it's anything to anyone young, it's like no single job is is the one. Like it is a se sequence. Like even like you look at you and what happened in your twenties. You know, mm, it's still that's right. it's just part of a bigger career. That's yeah. Right. So yeah. you you start looking at things in context of a of a whole. Yeah. You know, so I agree. You, mm. So you you don't get worried. You don't get overexcited when you have a job, and you don't get too depressed when you don't have a job. That's right. Yep. Yeah. You know, it, it, you maintain a more of an even. Yeah, Run with it. and here you are saying you didn't have any wisdom. 
<laughs> that he's willing Sounds to well too. Yeah. It's like Yoda's sitting. <laughs> yeah, it is, yeah. All right. Well, speaking of wisdom, what would you tell your younger selves as you started out acting professionally? We've heard one from Will, yeah. but maybe yeah. give us something different, Will. If you could go back in time and tell your younger self any piece of anybody wisdom, advice. So much. Um, so much. So much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the subtle throwaway line. So much. Oh, so much. Gosh. <laughs> um, um, uh, I, if I could um, say one thing to my younger self, particularly about two years into Shauna Street, um, I'd probably like to go back and probably slap him hard across the face and say, and just give him a check and just say, mm. just put a cap on that ego. That's what I'd probably say to him because I, I it, you know, it can get away. With with you when when the intentions i mean i've always loved acting since i was a kid and it's always been about acting but <clears throat> you know that that was a, a strange time for so many reasons and if i could yeah if i could do one thing i probably but then again in saying that had i not gone through that i wouldn't be the you know, person you are yeah i wouldn't be yeah. i was just thinking i was just about that. to say so, that yeah, yeah we were yeah. all thinking it. yeah if you hadn't had those experiences mm. you wouldn't have That's this right. wisdom yeah. You? yeah 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 yeah, <laughs> Mike. Good. What would you say? Um, I'd, I'd be. I was. I was a bad actor because I, I was too concerned about what people thought. Yeah, right. and I was too. Ooh, I was trying too yeah. hard to be something I wasn't. Yeah. And I think it was around, kind of ten years in, like th early thirties, that I went, "Oh, I'm be authentic and live in your flaws." Yeah. And nice. just and owning that idea, yeah. and then not trying to worry if people were judgy, because um, mm. I've made so many mistakes in, in acting and in life that I just started sitting in kind of who I was. And yeah. if I could mm. get my twenty-year-old self there, that would be that would mm. be cool. Mm. That's cool. Well, wow, that's awesome. I yeah, think, I yeah, could say I, that too. I like that. Mm. Um, I live by a mantra now that is um, prepare like your life depends on it. Oh, that's cool. And, and then do it like you don't give a shit. <laughs> ah. <laughs> you know, like like uh, I wish I could go back and give myself that then. You know, yeah. like just to to do the work, do the work, work harder than uh, the ethic I have now is, is 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 greater than five years ago, which was greater than five years before that. Yeah. You know, I wish I could take <clears throat> the ethic back now to then when I was young and prepare as well as I do now, and then but also just let it go. Let it go. You've done yeah. the prep. Yeah. Get in there. Mm -hmm. Just enjoy mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Play. Play. It's Fine. play. That's what kids do natural, right? <laughs> yeah. They do. Yeah. All right. How do you handle rejection? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, when people talk to you, like people who don't work in the industry, and they're like, hmm. one of the things I say is, like, you know, imagine being an accountant where every week you go for a job interview once, twice a week, and they turn you down nine times out of ten based on what you look like. <laughs> <laughs> Human resources get them on the phone. This is wrong. You know what I mean? Like that. Yeah. And then they go, oh, yeah. oh, that acting thing might be quite hard. You know? like yeah. mm. Because let's face it, there through all of our careers, our journey, there's been a lot of misses, right? Oh, you know, a lot of misses. Way more than wins, yeah. Way more than wins. So mm. if, if you're getting one in ten, you're doing really well. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. And I know... <laughs> As we are now, we've handled it a whole lot better. I mean, you mentioned, Mike, about being authentic and embracing your flaws. So, But our younger versions wouldn't have necessarily handled that. I think, I think you, take it, you take it much more personal when you, yeah. you're young, right? Do you think, Mike? Yeah, of, of mm. course, yeah. Well, you can't, it's hard not to because it's hard to separate you from the from the from the process of the world yeah because I, I think it's about you well and I, and I think i think that it's natural for actors to base our self-worth on whether or not we're working oh i know um, like when we catch yeah, up yeah, what are you right. what are you working yeah, on what are you working on <laughs> yeah yeah, well, oh, well, yeah like well, often when i'm asking what do you what have you been up to i'm not actually asking about acting because i don't like talking about it because yeah. mm. if i'm working i don't want to talk you know, like hey i'm working and you're not you know what i mean yeah, or awesome. or if they're working it, i'm not I, that's not the conversation you mm, want to be having so is there a perception that there's not enough work out there a perception a perception <laughs> <laughs> i don't know <laughs> because i'm, I'm yeah it all swings and roundabouts yeah right? like I, yeah. I i think it's a reality to be honest yeah um but 
I have noticed a significant shift in the last couple of years in terms of more in terms of the volume of projects, and I think that's more to do with. Um, you know, uh, streaming services that yeah. that have come on right. board, web series. So, so those I sort think of things. there is a change, and I mean, I was even saying to some of the young actors, you know, on Head High, I said you're in a really, you're on a really, uh, you're in a really, um, you know, uh, uh, a wonderful. It's a wonderful time for it's acting, amazing yeah. time, yeah. because there is a lot of work. I mean, and uh, you know, there's so much potential. So. Mm. I um I think that it has changed. I'm glad it has yep. because there's so much competition to get viewers, you know, through through the streaming and it, and it's really you know it's work it's working for Plus us. Plus, we're living in a, such a digital age with social media and yes. these devices that can mm. capture and we can do self test etc. Correct. And yeah. Put our whole brand well, or and promote ourselves, which we uh, never had well, when we 10, were growing up. Ten, right? fifteen years ago. You didn't even really want to go away on a long holiday because you might miss out on an audition. Whereas now you can put it, anything down on tape. Yeah, anywhere right. on the planet on at any time on your yeah. phone. Just go ahead. Mm. It's right. just you can just do it. You can travel. <laughs> I spent yeah. my twenties and thirties not fucking doing shit. Yeah. Well, I think that's evidence that I know you well, Will, because that was one of the questions we had for you. Talk to us about holidays you would have taken but waited for acting instead. <laughs> yeah, that's, well, yeah, yeah. That, you know, like you, you go, oh, I want to go to India for two months, but. but What's yeah. going to be happening? <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then, oh, Will's away now. Yeah, there's more. <laughs> there's, more work, there's, there's, there's more work. There's more work for the other it's guys. Taking one out of the equation. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, following on from that, actors are actually moving out of Auckland. For example, you know, you look at uh, Matt Whelan. You know, he doesn't even live here, no. and he's getting a lot of work. And he, he, you know, he doesn't. You don't have to, you know. And but, but you know, it, 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 everything's so close now. The world's so close. I it, mean, Dino much. Gorman was telling me the the role that he got. Uh, you know, playing Kirk Douglas. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. He wasn't getting you know a lot of work here in New Zealand, and he said uh, he literally put a self tape you know from his home, yeah. a cop, sent yeah. it over to LA, and boom, yeah. and he was away. Actually, following on from that, I know it's digressing a little bit. He did no. say to me he he got into the limo with the director <laughs> and John Goodman, and who was that? Who else is in that movie? John Brian Cranston. It's Brian Cranston. Yeah, he was yeah, in that yeah. movie, and they hopped in, and the and the director said, "Oh, this is Dino Gorman." He's playing Kirk Douglas, and this is before they started shooting. <laughs> so they started doing their Kirk Douglas impersonations, like Kirk, um, John Goodman and Brian yeah. Crescent, and he just said it was horrendous because they were so good. It was oh, their culture. No. And he was like, like <laughs> yeah. oh, my God. What, <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> They're going to recast, you know. It was, yeah. it, it was a good story. One of those moments. <laughs> 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 Um, which actually brings up a question. Has the lure of going to LA or going to Australia or, or going further afield, has that ever come up on the radar? I, I went up and lived in LA for yeah. a while and I, I really, like I love America. We were talking before, I'm fucking, I love America. Yeah, I, like, I, I love Disney too. and I love I mm. love the expanse. Yeah, there's so many There's so many good things. There's so many bad things sure. too, but there's so many great things about the place. But I really didn't enjoy li living in LA. And I was like, no, I'm just going to. I much rather yeah, live yeah. in New Zealand, and 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 now the times change so much that we can audition here. We don't have to live up there, right? It's a bit of a different time, but yeah, the lures. But I put it this way: if if I was a sprinter, I'd want to race against the best athletes in the world. Mm. And if you're working in in Hollywood or you're working in that system, you're working with the best people all the time. Mm. You know, yeah. So um, that's that's why I, I look at it. You want to be over there. And I'm, I'd love to work in Australia or, or, or England or wherever, but everyone's wanting to get to Hollywood. Mm. Yeah. No, yeah. I had kids, so I, it kind of changed my plan. Right. Like I, I would have gone for yeah. sure. Mm. And I, I think I think once Ali grows up, I'm pretty keen to go like at that 55, 60-year-old yeah. oh, age. Like, right. Alan, like yeah. Alan Dale. Cause right? Cause yeah, because yeah. yeah, our show reels are pretty good here. Yeah. You know, we've yeah. got, yeah. we got a bunch of American shows and stuff, and you yeah. go there, it's yeah. not like oh, we have work. And all the Kiwi shows. I remember doing a meeting yeah. in LA with the, was like the head of casting at Fox TV or something, and he was like, why haven't I seen you before? And yeah. this is great. Your reel's great. And mm. I was like, well, I live in a foreign country. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's why you haven't seen me. <laughs> but, you know, like but, yeah. we, we, we get this great experience here mm. and we get, we get to do this great work. And, and then we can, yeah, like you say, we can take that over. Yeah, I think we're lucky yeah. here, you know, that we, we do get to work on bigger shows mm. we do. without mm. having to move. Um, I am. Um, I, I was going to go too. I was going to go after ladies' night uh, when we did that. And, um, so I thought, good time to go, right? <laughs> so, um, <laughs> you, you know, really want to talk, you really want to talk about ladies' night. So, um, but I was going over there with Chris 
And he, uh, yeah, but, yeah. But I was the same as Mike. Um, you know, like. Well, I went over there with him. That's when we yeah, met. Yeah, that's when. That's right. And I just, um, I had steel come into my care, my, you know, my son, and that yeah. was it. So everything changed. I have I, Australia, not really a desire for me. Mm. I the reason for that as um as a Maori actor, I don't think they offer a lot for uh, Indigenous uh, actors, and um, I think the the roles that they that they provide for people with you know darker skin are poor and they don't know how to write for them and I did give Australia a go um, back in 2000 and one of the things and I know it's changed that's a long time ago and it, it, one of the things that the agent said to me um, this guy, and I'll say it, this guy called Mark Morris he said oh um, because you're brown, you won't get a lot of work in this country. And he literally came out and said it. When I had, you know, Katrina sitting there, and said, you know, because you're, you know, blonde yep. hair, blue eyes, you're going to be fine. And I, I mean, it made me feel really terrible. And I, but I, did, I thought, well, Australia's not really my country. It's not really my culture. Yeah. I'm not prepared to fight for it. Sure. So I, I just thought I'm going home. You know, yep. and and that was it. So I, I had no real desire. And I, with Australia. I don't see much has changed, to be well, quite honest. funny you should mention that because yeah. in recent times I've heard the exact same story. Yeah. In yeah. fact, I was speaking to Craig about it. Yeah. Uh, Craig, and I, and I shared the story with him and he said, no, not much has changed. And I remember even um, Jay Lagaya saying that when he was in Water Rats, he just was a glorified Tonto rather than, you know, actually having a storyline. Right. You go, wow, look, you know, I see a dead person on the beach. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> let's go with all the white characters and then give them the storyline. So you know it, that's because that and also they just don't know how to write. So Australia, no. Uh, um, I would have loved. I'd love. I'd like to do what you know, Mike was just saying. Yeah, sure. Me and you, mate. And maybe five years. Give it a go. Five, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> give that a crack. Maybe, but, um, well, maybe we could all go over and do like the Golden Boys, like the Golden Girls, yeah, you know, like those yeah. old guys all flatting together or something. Um, you know, I, sorry, can I say one more thing? So I, I stayed back for Steel, and Steel said, and then, you know, that was a choice I made and made the sacrifice. And he goes, Dad, you know, when he got a little bit older, around about 18, he said, oh, why don't you give your LA a crack? And I went, thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, thanks, 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 thanks son. man. Stayed for you, you know, paid yeah. private school fees. Do you feel like we're getting there We're getting there here now with the, the types of roles we're writing and, and the substance of the work that we're doing here? Oh, no, I think New Zealand's I – mean, I, I mean, I think New Zealand's done significant work in terms of looking after different cultures. Yeah. I mean, like, th there can always be improvement. Sometimes I actually feel a little embarrassed because I think there's too I – mean, there's, there's a big swing because, you know, there's a pressure to, yeah, to, have, to have Indigenous. But, I, I look, I – I think New Zealand are doing they're doing pretty good. Yeah, well, I, mean, if there's a, if, I think if a swing. pendulum swings, yeah, it's going to exactly. swing, and then it's going to yeah. You know, hopefully, it settles in that space where everything's represented, right? Well, it, well, every, everything now, if, as you know, is is, yeah. is the renaissance of of strong female characters. Yeah, yeah. Which um, I'm happy for you to talk about. Well, what's your feeling on that, mate? <laughs> I think it's awesome. Yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> I don't you know, know why. I don't know we... why you ask me that. I don't that, know. I was going to. I thought you might say something misogynist or something like that. <laughs> yeah, because I because I'm known for my. No. Is the networking side of acting is that prevalent in New Zealand, or is that more of a LA kind of thing? Yeah, it's uh, it's not a part of my world, so yeah. I can't comment on that. In fact, I, I found when I stopped networking, I got work. To be I'm honest, the, I'm the, I don't even know how to network. You know, there are those yeah. people that they're like really well, like naturally. Oh, so I'm just moving away from the mic. They're like naturally good. I just I think I'm Jumping socially up. awkward, and I don't know. I I can talk to people that I know really well. Sure, but I go into a thing like a network, oh, and I it, don't. You want. Know I don't want to get a job because I know someone. Mm. I want to yep. get a job because I'm the right actor for that role and they like my work. I, yeah, I think it's more of an American thing. I, I was told by an actor that, well, in, in over in LA, it's 80% business and 20% show. So it's more. Wow. Go, imagine yeah. having that as a. Yeah. Oh. It, it, um, that yeah. might be just his particular you know, mm. uh, experience, but it was definitely. If you are driven and you have that ambition, you know, you sort of got to make it work, create, build the relationships, et cetera, et cetera. I think so that speaks hard. to the difference, doesn't it, between yeah. New Zealand and, and the US. Mm. And of course, there's different paths, yeah. you know, that you can take. How, how, do, you, how do you do that if you're introverted, you know? That's right. Like, yeah. How do you get, well, yeah. You know, because mm. it's, uh, that's, that's, I don't know, that would be just so hard. I'd find yeah, it would be. So I mean, I've never felt comfortable with that no. myself, <clears throat> you know. No, and I, yeah, no, I, mean, I, I can't remember myself. It's a time, it's yeah. a topic, right? Yeah, and I and we were putting down our questions, and you had that story about how Anthony had said that to you. Yeah, that yeah, it's like a bit always in stuck LA. in my mind. Yeah, because the LA was just such a competitive market and environment. 
and, and you had to get, you know, you had to start. Who said that to you? Anthony Ray. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Anthony, Anthony, Ray. Anthony Ray. Anthony Ray. The, the only, the, the only person yeah. with a voice deeper than yours. <laughs> yeah, that's so, right. So, um, Anthony. But he was specifically talking about Hollywood yeah. and LA and networking there. And um, But I, I, what I did <laughs> learn was that, you know, 80% of the time, if someone says, hey, you know, let's keep in touch, we'll call you, they don't. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, right. so it's establishing real connections, well, obviously. Yeah, what, what yeah. I found, one of the things I didn't like when I was living up there was- The falseness? Yeah, well, yeah. Every, everyone's really nice to you for a very the first period when they kind yeah. of meet you because they're trying to work out what they can kind of get from you. And then when they realize they're they can't you get, you, get something yeah. from you, then they're worried about what you're trying to get from them. Mm-hmm. And I think as Kiwis, we go up because as Kiwi, we're like, hey, man, how's it going? You want to meet someone, you just want to meet yeah. them on a level yeah. playing field. And I remember being, uh, we played poker with this group of people for like three months. And I remember they kind of, they were great to start with. And then we were just kind of meeting up and playing poker. We weren't really doing much socially. And it was about oh, nearly three months in. And one of the guys we found out was like a stunt, he was a stunt car driver which we found out one night because we tried to follow him through the streets of LA and it was like he was trying, it was like he was trying to lose us in an action movie. <laughs> and uh, anyway, he, he was off to race in, in I think it's Sonoma, like just north yeah, of yeah. LA. And, uh, but at that weekend, he wanted us to come watch. And that weekend, me and Chris decided we'd go to Vegas because, you know. As you what, do. As you do. And I remember I just, like, I just phoned him. I had his, I phoned him from Vegas because I knew he was racing just to wish him luck and yeah you know, that was it and I just left a message and the next week I saw him he had like literally like tears in his eyes and he thanked me for calling him I was the only one who wow. phoned him right wow and since then we're still we're still great mates now right and and it was like you had to, you have to kind of cross this bridge to get into like a deeper friendship with people there because yeah. everyone's trying to kind of use everyone. Yeah. So they, they've got their, their armor and their walls up yeah. and their protection mechanisms. It's yeah, like, oh, yeah. here's Will who's genuine and, and actually. Well, they don't understand it. Yeah, they, don't like, know, oh, they, they don't understand kind of our culture. Is yeah. this, like we, we don't yeah. have that same competitive nature. Yeah. Mm. I, I think we, I mean, I think we are competitive, but I think we're kind of supportive competitive. That's right. <clears throat> yeah, mm. Like yeah, we want to be the best, and we want each other to be the best, but we're not going to be the best by putting someone else down. By pushing, no. yeah, yeah. No. sorry. Yeah, it's really something to be proud of, there eh? as Kiwis. I think yeah. so. Mm. Mm. Which is almost the t- the opposite of tall poppy. Mm. So let's talk about mm. money and survival, because um, <laughs> it's it can be really tough for actors, and I don't think people know that. How far do you go before you draw the line uh, on? this thing called acting if you've ever had a drought do you know what i mean before you go okay um just gonna settle down with a solid job now for a while or if you've ever had moments in your life like that where you had to just take time out because acting as they say wasn't paying the bills and then of course it can be totally the opposite Claire? yep well uh i I, I, I'll go back to ladies' night because that's kind of. I, I, <laughs> I don't know why that's coming up so much, but I think um, ma- 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 Mike, do you want to do you want to I mean, remount ladies' night with me and Blair? <laughs> we could do a good ladies' night. We could, we'd do a great. We night could do ladies a ladies' night. night. Um, <laughs> maybe you I, could, maybe you guys could do a survey and see if we should do it. <laughs> great idea. Yeah, um, yeah, I I am actually doing it. Um, at a point at the end of next year. I know. Are you a, really? Set, yeah. Really? So, who's doing it with me? I need a year. Shall I, shall I come Royce, down? No. <laughs> so, and he knows you I know you told me stories about you and him and show boys so I know that you got, I know and he, it was funny because we just did Shortland Street the musical down in Parmany and they talked us into doing it and he said mate I'm 50 next year I'm 50 next year <laughs> <laughs> and we, so that's what he said to me anyway I said well mate I'm 48 so I said what anyway um, oh, yeah, so, so back to finances I after ladies night in 2004 I decided oh, I'm going to be an actor and full time, and I don't care. And I, I'll just sit out and wait for, for work. <clears throat> and uh, it, it got really tough. Like I just couldn't afford to. You know, I was eating to my savings. Got very depressed because uh, you know I was trying to live this cafe lifestyle to try and wait for stuff. I did that for a, after. Uh, oh God, it would have been at least a whole year. And it got to a point where I thought, Nah, this. This can't continue. It's very depressing, and I, you know, just couldn't survive. Yeah. So, and it was funny. I went back into focus on something else, which was law. And ironically, that's when, that's when work started coming back. Mm. Um, when I put my energy into something else, but I, 
I know I remember Mike was doing. I know um, Will had his business. Mike was doing personal training and some real mm. estate as well. And there, you just can't live off it here, unfortunately. You, I mean, I'd love to, but you can't. I mean, people can make um, careers by doing other things, I suppose, with writing, directing, all that sort of stuff. But even that. Um, I think you have to have something, particularly if you have children. And here's the other thing. I think by doing those things, it actually makes you a better performer, better actor, because you're, you're back in the, in the world living, a, a, you know, a real life, I suppose, with, with people and, and experiencing real things. So when you come back to, uh, to play a role, you know, you've got more depth, you've, there's more richness to your performance because you can make a character mm. more truthful and more three dimensional because of the experiences you've had. Yeah. Mm. I agree with mm. everything you see there. Cause sometimes you can be in that acting bubble That's right. and you are removed from the kind of reality. That's right. Yeah. Of <laughs> other people's worlds and lives. Because it is, you know, being on set or being on stage, it's, it's it is quite a, a surreal environment. Yeah, I think. Yeah, like, my, when we were talking outside before we came in, Mike, I was talking about the people that we know and all our friends now. Like everyone's really hyper motivated, and I, I knew when I was younger, I knew about, uh, there was a whole lot of actors who they go on the dole and they wouldn't do anything. There was a just I'm just going to act, you know. But I've never I've never been that way. Like I've always had to work and do other things mm. while I'm doing it because I, I can't sit around. That's it's not in my DNA just to yeah. sit around and do nothing. And so I don't know if that leads to success, but I think Blair's right. Like when, you, when you're doing something productive, you're yeah. a better, better version of yourself and you're in a better mm. space so the work will come. Yeah. Right. And we have droughts. I'm, I've had a big drought this year, but it's just it's just the way it's been. Mm. And so, but we go through these. You go through these cycles, yeah. and you go through these changes of age. <clears throat> you sure. know, there, there's a period. I remember when I went, when I switched from my twenties to my thirties. I had this drought because I didn't look like I was in my twenties, and I didn't look yeah. like I was in my thirties. And so there were just was I was uncastable. <laughs> You go, you know, you, the un- that sounds like a new film, The Uncastables. The Uncastables. <laughs> the Uncastables. That's yeah. the superpowers. Oh, that's a good idea. They will never be cast, no matter what they do. <laughs> you know, like you just, go, you just go through these phases, but you've just got to understand yeah, that you just, right. because then, then you'll have like five mm. jobs all in a row, yeah. two of them at the same time, and you'll be begging to not work. <laughs> <laughs> I dealt with not acting by um, realizing I was an artist anyway, regardless of someone else giving me the thumbs up mm. yeah. and mm. making my own work. And even though it was like circus theater, which is. Mm. But it's phenomenal mm. work. Yeah. But, well, you know, it's just yeah. an, out, it's it, an outlet yeah. for. And yeah. so by driving my own stuff, suddenly after six years of that, I started to realize when I get cast in something, it was like, oh, bonus. Rather than waiting the whole yeah, time, you know. Right. So, uh, uh, but that, but that, but, but that actually harks back to those great actors and those older actors who who were part of theatre companies in the states who would they'd go and do the Hollywood film and then they go back to their their theatre company. Yeah, you know, yeah. William yeah. Will, Willem Dafoe and mm-hmm. I think um, Tim Robbins and they you know they were different parts of different companies, but they go back to their their kind of roots. Yeah, going back to theatre is great. Like I, I mean, mm. in a month's time, I'm going down to Invercargill to do Macbeth with the with the Southland. You you know, it's a pro, it's really? a pro am and it's going to be outdoors, yeah. And, wow! But like, it's it's given me a chance to do that role, which I never do, and mm. and yeah. like just keep doing the stuff, you keep Man. doing it. Absolutely, that'd be Fantastic. great. In the cargo, <laughs> when are you doing that? Uh, January. Oh, so January, February. Come down. They'll, they'll, they'll look I'll after you. It. They'll look after you. Oh, I'm looking forward to the blue cod. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the blue cod. <laughs> Is that Bluff Oyster season down this year? Yeah, I, I hope so. I, I hope buddy, so. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're down to our last few questions for each yeah. individual. And we had three each. I think we now have two each left. Mike, you're up first. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> yeah, for, looking back at, at one of your, yeah, as one of your worst mistakes or failures, not that everything. <laughs> <laughs> Why is this question for Mike? Because <laughs> he doesn't it have many, that's why. Isn't it? <laughs> Failures. Many. Obviously, it's the way you frame it, but was there something that you learned from that? And obviously you do, but was there one that in particular that really stood out um, that you felt that you learnt and grew from it? Oh, heck, Rob. <laughs> do you need a moment to, yeah. to think about that? Oh, it was. But, I mean, it's got. A, I mean, I know this is an acting thing, but it comes yeah. down to to your personal life because that's we are who we are, and so it was. It was dealing with 
um, my flaws as a person and the way yeah. I was treating people in the world, um, specifically in my relationships and and um, mm. and and coming to terms with you know because we blame we like to point fingers and say yeah. it to other people and stuff and when I you know to really own that it was me and that that was a big change for me because suddenly then I I could no longer go into as an actor and pretend I was someone I wasn't because I wasn't that person. So I had to let that go and it started getting a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. wow. You, you, wow. Yeah. It's funny that when you start to embody who you really are. Yeah. It was, and, yeah. And, and, and you hit the nail on the head, be becoming creative. Yeah, creative, yeah. And, 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 I, and I think being brave enough yeah. to expose the, and, the the dark sides of myself, mm, like yeah. being on screen and going, I am, I can be this passive aggressive and I can be this much of a cock and I'm not afraid to show you this on screen. Yeah. And like I'd have actors that I was working with, especially on Shorty, like mm. want, wanting to not work with me because they didn't like me so much, you know, and just right. kind of sitting, sitting in that and going, okay, this is, this is my world. And I just, just actually rather than fighting yeah. it or trying to befriend going, okay, cool. Yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> that takes balls. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Well, I just. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because I think on some level we all want to be likable, and to embrace that uh, is, yeah. is tremendous. Mm. But it? yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like I think, I think if you know yourself really well, right, and if you know, like, um, maybe twenty years now I've known you, Mike. Mm. Like I've always thought you're a good guy, right? And yeah. and I think when you when you're a good person. No matter you know the, what you were talking about for you know, darker shades, we all have darker shades, right? Mm. I think when you're a good person, you know you are. You're not afraid to show all those dark sides because you're not um, you're not that person. You you know that mm. that's not who you are. Whereas I think people who are an asshole, I know a few actors who are assholes. Who? <laughs> we'll list them in a minute. It's just in the show notes. But you know, what I mean, like they struggle to play those darker characters and sit in those darker characters because oh, I know they they, mean. they they they, they, they don't actually they don't actually want the world to know that right. about themselves. Yeah. Whereas when when you're a good person, it's like I fucking re I love playing assholes. Yeah, like, mm. I love it because I don't do it in my real life. Mm. Mm. You get to you get to express these parts of I think it in real mm. life, but you know, like I get mm. to express these parts of me that aren't yeah aren't real, mm. and and you just you go for it because I think you know revealing your true self, you become more vulnerable, right? For all, all your good stuff, but also all your bad stuff. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, mm. absolutely. It's truth. Yeah, you've got to you've got to it's allow truth. the truth of those darker places yeah. out. Mm. You show the ugly. Mm. I was going to do that. Yeah. I was going to show the ugly. <laughs> yeah. Gonna, it's a, well, yeah, you can, you can, you can, you can um, trademark the, that if you want. Show the ugly. You guys could make some t-shirts. Actually, that's yeah, not a bad idea. idea. Yeah. The yeah, reality hub. That's a t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> the the uncastables. Show the ugly. Um, I, I've got the uncastables. Another question for you, Mike. Fire will kind of fire. Fire doesn't go off. <laughs> Mike, what are the most important qualities in an actor? Oh, just authenticity. I, I, that's all I'd say with that. And imagination. Yeah. Yeah. Good answer. Good answer. Yeah, I'm not adding to that. That was perfect, man. Uh, um, well, that, that, but uh, maybe. <laughs> this better be good. I, no, like, uh, <laughs> I could, I mean, what can I say on top of that? To be honest? I know, someone who can. Uh, Learn their lines. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's true. Turn up and do yeah, the job. Turn up on time. Uh, yeah, that's I mean, true. learn the lines. Don't actually, bump into the furniture. You know, yeah. I mean, that's a big. Part. But no, maybe listening. Uh, you know, and yeah. uh, and not have their process getting in the way of your process. You worked with actors who are just like, look, I know that you need to do this to prep, but this is not helping me. Could you stop oh, screaming? No. Could you stop yeah. screaming at me? Yeah, that's stuff. <laughs> Mm. The one particular actress that was doing this one time, like, like that, and he says, I am the one, the one, and the me. I am the one, the one, the me. And I'm sitting there going, <laughs> so, I tell you who that actress was. And, oh God, anyway, you know, I mean, like, yeah, I, yeah, don't take it too seriously. I think the more you relax, the better you are in terms of putting on a good performance as well. Yeah. yeah, personally. All right, Blair, next set of questions oh. are for you. Yeah. We know that you also, also work as a lawyer. Oh, yeah. 
Can you speak to what you and see? A very other, fine lawyer at that. A no. very fine family oh. lawyer indeed. Can you can you speak to what you see other actors doing right or wrong with with financial survival? I know we talked about this earlier, but do you have any other take on that? Well, that's an interesting question you've asked me with in relation to the law. Um, <laughs> well, you're, you, you, Steve, you Stephen obviously your, thinks law has something to do with accounts. <laughs> <You're only laughs> Isn't that what lawyers do? They just print money. No, yeah. I mean. <laughs> To be fair, you you know you've you've sorted out a balance there where if um if there are periods of time where you're not acting, you have another thing to do. And yes. I don't care what it is, but you have another thing to do. Yep. And we talk to that extent, but can you see anything that that actors are doing right or wrong in that regard when when it comes to another thing to do if they're without work? I mean, actually, well, like from my experience, I can't. I mean, most people that I know, um, you know, present company included uh th- they've had you know careers and and jobs outside the pure acting jobs you know and and have been quite successful in them and i think we've learned that because we have to i don't there's not many people well i suppose johnny lee but like he saves well and he's well he was always working but uh i mean if you ask Johnny if he is, how much he's been working, yeah, he, he'll I, tell you he hasn't. He has been working. He works, he works more than anything. I think Kiwis are pretty good, uh, to be honest. Um, I haven't seen any major disasters. I guess the one disaster would probably, um, and I say this because I love him, he was on Shorty Street for a significant period of time, big icon. And so, so but you know, but his, you know, his financial issues were, were public. You know, they mm. came, it was very public, you know. So, you know, a couple of bankruptcies and he, and he, he wears them and owns them. And I think, um, that was probably the worst case scenario, but he went to Shawnee Street at a very, very young age and didn't have those adult mentors to to lead him to, you know, have some sort of financial stability. But most actors, I think, uh, you know, that I knew, you know, uh, it was my peers in my age, they, they were pretty good. And actually the young ones coming through, they're even better. You know, they're, 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 really, they're really solid, they're sharp, they know what they're doing. As actors or as su- survivalists? But- both, both. So both, yeah. but it, but yeah. you know, being able to support themselves to do you know what we love. I, what yeah. are you seeing there, Mike? What do you think? Oh, of? just reflecting on something that Blair actually said earlier before this cast. We we're talking about how the young actors these days have so much confidence, mm. right. and relaxation, and sitting in themselves. Like we were just comparing our Muppet yeah. young selves. Do, do you think? Do you, well, do you think? Do you think that the New Zealand culture has changed a bit? And uh, a bitch? A bit. <laughs> that's, that's just my <laughs> diction. That's just my. That's my addiction. <clears throat> um, do you think that, yeah. that has changed a bit? That um, the younger generation's a bit more confident and a bit more self-assertive, and, and, and a bit, a little bit mm. more, a little bit more American, but in a good way. Yeah, I, I don't mm. know. More, more chance to be in front of camera. More chance of seeing. Like when you were yeah. when you first got on Shorty, like how much New Zealanders on screen had you seen? Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah not true. Many at all. True. Like, do you know what mm. I mean? Like, so there. Well, it's gr- accepted now. Like, uh, it used to be kind of strange to see and hear the the Kiwi accent on screen. But now, now yeah, internationally, people want to hear it. Yeah. 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 Like, I'm surprised that, that you know some of the new productions that, that are being made that they don't have more Kiwi accent in them because foreigners love to hear it. Mm. You know, mm. like Taika. Thank you, Taika. Yeah. You know, thank like you, his he, having his voice in films overseas. <laughs> You know, like so great, and 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 um, no. oh shit! I don't think they have any fear and at all. Klimatol. And I think I think, um, and I, I can only speak from watching Steel. He he um, he uh, because of the internet, because of their exposure to the world through the internet, they don't have the same insecurities that we have. In fact, they're much more confident. For example, they refuse to go to university because they say, hey, listen, I do not want to spend uh, money on, uh, we'll have a student loan on something that I just, I'm not going to use. Whereas we would say, we've got to just jump into that next step. Now, they're still part of that generation that does that. But th- this this crew, well, this crew coming forward now, they go, nope, I know what I want and this is what's going to happen. Yeah. And a story and mm. no fear doing it. And that's, mm. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, you look at it and you go, it's impressive. It can become across slightly arrogant from our perspective, from our generation, but you've got to admire it. That yeah, it's amazing. Got the balls yeah. And the, the yeah. young the young fellas um, who are on the show head high, you know, that were on, it, it, it they they just had so much confidence and, uh, you know, no fear whatsoever about tackling any sort of uh, scene or changing it up. I was sitting there going, wow, this is this is really incredible. It's, it's, <clears throat> I might just mention Head High as a show that isn't out on air yet. And when this, um, when this podcast goes to air, I'm sure Head High will be still in production for many months as it edits and gets itself together. But look out for that in the future. Yeah. Mm. Do you think uh, – 
are, are we doing a little bit of that thing of uh, how our, the generation above us like looked at our music and went, these guys listen to like music that isn't isn't as good. You know, like, are, are we looking back thinking that that this generation of younger people are more confident when actually, if they if you looked at if you looked at our generation when we were that age, maybe we're just looking back at thinking that we were way more insecure and way more less confident than we actually were. You mean we're looking at it with older eyes and we're yeah yeah. Do you know what, do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, I do. Mm. Um, I, well, possibly, but. Um, possibly the, the I, landscape I, has changed. How old Steel? He's yeah, twenty-two, yeah. so yeah, he's, yeah. he's right in the pocket of you know those boys coming through. Yeah, and um, uh, and he and I noticed yeah. distinct similarities between those young actors and Steel's attitude. And I was right. like, "Yep, okay." So it's similar. The other thing too is they they you know they haven't. I guess uh, I don't think they've really ever. Suffered anything if that makes sense. I don't even think. <laughs> Are you oh, talking I, about the whole entitlement kind of? I think that there is a sense of that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've certainly noticed mm. an arrogance from from that generation. Yeah. And I'm not saying they're a rude generation. It's just. No. Well, because yeah, you think about when we were young, or, you know, a little while ago, you know, Christmas was for gifts. You know, like there wasn't the warehouse and there wasn't cheap. Mm. Yeah, you know, action figures, and you know, like we didn't get everything handed to us. That like my kids mm. benefit so greatly from us being able to afford. You know, maybe I don't know if I've I've stepped up from an income bracket that my parents had, but I do feel like they, those kind of tangible kind of gift things, and the society is a bit kind of. Is it easier yeah. than when we were kids? Was it was it was it a little bit harder or less? I think, I, I think they see we never got exposed to the world. I think that's the significant right. difference. Mm. Do, do you think so, it's the so, connection of uh, Facebook and I think it is absolutely the whole, all those so platforms are they uh, still was on YouTube mm. all the way through his teens. Um, you know he would he would show me things. He'd say, look look at this what's happening over in, su- in such and such place. Right. It's now mm. going viral. Yeah. all the kids are following it. And it's just the access to the world, which we didn't have, no, absolutely, which makes yeah. them more confident because yeah. they see things sooner than what we did. Well, we had two t- TV channels. Yeah, I think that's. I think the internet yeah. has changed um, that generation significantly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. my yeah. daughter's nineteen it, and she is boss. Yeah, is, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah right. Unbelievable. So you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Another question for you, Blair: Is there a genre or form you wouldn't want to be in as an actor? I wouldn't want to be in. Yeah. Musical theatre. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I, I, I that I did that. Shaun Street, the musical, like it was a lot of fun in the end. But oh my god, I haven't done a musical since the nineties. And yeah, you can go. Anyway, um, <laughs> Will is laughing Will, so hard. Yeah. He just yeah. he just dribbled right. a bit. Yeah. <laughs> it was it was certainly a challenge. There's no question about that. So thank God I was playing. Well, you, you, no, seem, no emotion you have a great voice, by the way, mate. Right. Yeah, you do. Um, but you seem to shit. say that with reverence, actually. Ladies, no. You really do. <laughs> I mean, we laugh about it because that's one genre I wouldn't ever want to be in but, uh, and I have no skill in either. But you say it with reverence because you can appreciate how hard it is too. It was hard and um, – it was combining all of it together and, you know, not used to it and stuff like that, you know, and when you've got solos and, uh, you know, and hadn't done it for a long time, <laughs> then you've got someone who's with you like Roy Snow who just comes in and knows music. Oh, like, it was boss. horrible. Oh. It was like, yeah, I, yeah. you know, it took me like hours <laughs> well, in this I can I can appreciate the skill level of the triple threat, right? Like yeah. the ability to sing, dance, act. And the triple yeah, threat. Yeah, Roy was so good. Yeah. Like, uh, but, you know, we got there in the end. But uh, <laughs> I wouldn't say musical theatre. I, I don't think there's any genre that I wouldn't. Um, take on I okay. Oh no, I, 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 no, no. There is one. Ah. Uh, no, I, th- which it just scares the living. Uh, it's theatre sports. I can't. Oh, oh really? Oh, oh, really? I can't handle it. Oh. No, yeah. improv. Okay, so no. flip that on its head. What's the genre you would most want to do if you could? If you just, I'd like to do that. Uh, comedy. Always comedy. comedy. Yeah. Always comedy. Love comedy. I yeah. thought you were going to say superhero. No comedy. Okay. Yeah. yeah. A superhero yeah, a genre. I oh, I thought you asked me about superheroes. Are we going to that conversation? Now? No, no, yeah, okay, like that's Nick, different. That's different level yeah. stuff, isn't it? <laughs> I so. guess when I say genre, I guess Nick Western Man. action. Oh, okay, you know, but comedy. And, mm, oh, okay, yeah. okay. Well, because um, you've done tons of comedy. Okay, well, 
Uh, okay, so something uh, drama, uh, you know, much like um, you know, Sopranos or something. Like that, of course, you know, like Godfather, that sort of stuff. I so you that. want to get that filthy narco, yeah, the narco stuff, m- yeah. mustache. I love the fa- I love the way that you know Sopranos. They could, you know, they they ate pasta. You know, they were you know strong alpha anti heroes, and they were just you know they were, the characters were pretty disgusting if you got down to it. But they were, yeah, you know, there was well, something they're, they're flawed, real they're flawed, flawed human anti-heroes. beings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were, I loved it. Yeah. Guys, open open floor oh, on that one genre. My um my film CV like I've done a lot of TV but I haven't done many films and it reads like the low lights of all these <laughs> all these people's careers like it was Keeper Sutherland came down he's not even on the he doesn't even have it on his IMDb anymore um that um this other girl the, it didn't even go to a movie it went to a DVD I think so I, I would actually just love to get a break and work in film. Right, you know, I, I don't yeah. any know. genre. You just take anything. I just yeah. yeah I'd never. I've never made. I, I've made one sort of low budget zombie film, which was super fun. Oh yeah, <laughs> down in Dunedin. Yeah, yeah. You know, so that, just one where the superstar keeps it on his IMDb would be good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just, or that, that, that be, people want to watch. I'd be interested in the speed of that, and um, mm. um, yeah, seeing what that is. I think right. the two hardest genres are horror and comedy. I think horror, the the, the belief in the given circumstance, that fear. Like, you know, you think of the great horrors, mm. just we, we buy that those characters are just in that amount of peril, right? And um, and comedy, I think the timing and the wit is is, is a next level kind of experience. So, mm. I mean, yeah, <laughs> that, uh, that'd be pretty cool. Well, yeah. Yeah. Given oh, that, you had a question for me. Yeah, yeah, because I want to finish on you, mate. <clears throat> uh, when, when young <laughs> actors... <laughs> Should I? Is it? <laughs> I'm gonna edit that out. Oh my that's, that's going. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so 127. Get that time code edit out. <laughs> edit it out. Will. I didn't say anything. That was that was that was Mike's reaction yeah, to your yeah, question. Yeah, yep, it like, was. Many people have wanted to end on me, <laughs> and it ain't gonna happen there, Steve. <laughs> well, as a teacher of acting, what are young actors doing wrong and right these days in the audition oh, process? In the audition process. Yeah, oh, that's really specific. I think I think young actors they need to learn to make interesting choices, yeah, you know, and make a choice that's um, watchable, that that fulfills the character, but is really specific to who they are. Um, I think a lot of the theatre training, I understand the, the the principle of bringing you back to your neutral, right? Like we train at the same school, so you understand. Like we used to do lots of training to kind of get rid of your natural ticks, but but our natural ticks are actually what are going to get us the work. So the thing about film and television is is the ability to go. Okay, I know I know I have these idiosyncras- um, synchronous- Idiosyncras- idiosyncrasies. Idiosyncrasies. Thank you, thank you, thank you for helping me out there. Um, like Bill Nighy, I fucking love watching that guy. Right, but he's from again, man. Drop the C bomb. <laughs> Blair Strang. Okay, um, but you know, he, uh, we watch him because of the way he is. And so I think young actors need to work out who they are, understand their personal tics so that if they need to, they can get rid of them for a particular character, but make choices that are really specific to who they are. Because often, you know, when you're casting, you're looking for the character that's written with something special. Or that extra thing, and so uh, there's three, there's three or four, five actually. There's five actors sitting in this room. And <laughs> took me a while to count. <laughs> you just made okay. the cut, Stephen. Yeah, yeah. Just, just made the mistake. Um, Thanks, bro. Thanks. So, <laughs> so you know, like each each one of us are yeah. going to look at a script. We're going to look at the same character, mm. but we're all going to approach it from who we are yeah. and from a very specific, special place. And so, and and we need to own that. We need to actually embrace that because I can't be a better Mike than Mike can be, or a better Rob, or a better Blair, or a better right. Steve. You know, like I can't, I can't do that. Mm. I can only be the best Will I can be. And mm. I and and then it's up to the people casting to look at that tape and yeah. go, you know, what, I like the I like what Rob's doing there. You know, mm. and I'd I'd always much rather get a job or not get a job dying on my own sword than trying to be someone else. 
So right. I'd say yeah, that's probably the advice I'd give. So, so it's bringing a unique aspect of your own essence, your own yeah, yeah, talent, your, your impulses. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the advice yeah. I'd give. You know, mm. make good choices and make them your own. Mike, you said recently, look at uh, Brad Pitt. Look at the way he moves so openly and freely. And and as he moves and he's not just totally still all the time. And mm. the people make the mistake of thinking that you have to be really low energy on camera. Oh God. Yeah. Was that you, Mike? Did you say that? Yeah, I was talking about um I was to- I often imagine what a guy like Brad Pitt would have been like in his very first audition before he was famous. That's right. And he would have been just like he is. He would have been relaxed yeah. and he would have scratched his head. And delivered his lines and been so sitting in himself. He'd have probably mm. been eating something too because he eats some yeah, Eating things. something and obviously super good looking. But, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Ridiculous. but you know, they would have watched and gone, this is a dude yeah. that's in himself. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and then you get actors trying to be that but yeah. not being themselves. No, no. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly it. <clears throat> that's exactly it. Mm. Yeah. Can you speak to – um? Yep. <laughs> yep. Can you, <laughs> can you speak to people thinking that – Acting is about um, being really withdrawn or not putting out energy. Oh, yeah, look, I, oh I, my I, God, I, I can. Yeah, I don't, I don't agree with it. Um, and I, uh, I, I, the, the being introverted. I mean, like, there's a place for it, right? There is, and depending if the character allows for it, absolutely. But if it becomes your your thing or your what do you call it? Your um, Go to um, your go to mm. where everything is played in here is played. It's it's a introverted energy, um, and it also uh, it, it kind of um, doesn't allow you to open yourself up to all the ranges of emotions for that particular character. I, I see that as as quite a selfish performance. I think you you need to be open to to all emotions, um, depending on what the character is uh, yeah. the character needs. Oh, yeah. uh, and and you know there are there are, you know there are particular actors that I you know have. Who have certainly been considered good because they stick to that introverted process, and I think personally that they are they're possibly perceived to be better than what they really are, and uh, they've just found a you know a little they found their niche they found a little niche to kind of get through, and that's fine. I mean, well done, but I I don't I think it's more of a, a weakness and a strength in terms of in terms of performance. Yeah, look, uh, the the thing about energy is a really big thing for me, right? Like one of the things I'm. I try to get across to the students at the school is that there's a real misleading thing that there's a statement and I think it's something like um, the art of screen acting is the art of doing nothing but doing it incredibly well right that doesn't imply lack of energy so, but what a lot of people do is they sit back on their energy and they kind of they kind of just you know do nothing and that he, you you look at the great performances. You look at Leonardo DiCaprio. That guy is never under energized. Tom Cruise. Mm. It's, yeah. The energy is up, forward, and out. Right. And so if you and 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 screen performance and is is a is, is closer to theatre performance than people realise. Of course. That, and so if you think yeah. about it as dials, <laughs> I think what you do is you dial back the physicality. Go dials down maybe to eighty percent. The vocal volume dials maybe down to sixty. But the energy maybe dials back like three percent. No, no, no the internal the internal energy stays absolutely. In fact, the stiller you are, yeah, that's right. the more internal energy you need, so not I, less. I often think mm, of yeah, Phil yeah. Brown, who was oh, yeah. like the best best actor at my year at drama school, yeah. and he had so much going on. Yeah, that without doing anything, he was interesting. Yeah, you yeah. Know? He's yeah, a, he's a wonderful actor. Just, he really is. Uh, I think he's yeah. one of the yeah. best yeah. in this country. And yeah, he's yeah. and it's just because he's just loaded with everything he does, and it's the that amount of energy that you're talking about. Yeah. He has it in spades, you know. Absolutely right. Because the intention has to be the same whether you're on stage, whether you're on, whether you're on uh, when you're in, on screen. It's just it's it's you're right. There is a technique to delivering, but the intention and the process must be exactly the same. Yeah, so yeah. the energy must be exactly the same. Yeah, you're changing. Yeah, you're changing it for a shot size, but. You need to understand that the energy has to be, you have to, yeah. <laughs> it has I to mean, be out. Otherwise, it turns into kind of like, I don't know, like floppy freaking nothing. Oh, it because mm. it's, it's, it's incredibly dull to watch. And it, it happens a lot on television. You see it a lot in, in, in experienced actors. But they're, they're the people that we don't watch on the show. You think about the TV show Suits. Who are the characters we think about if you've watched the show? We think about Lewis Litt. Yeah. And we think about Donna. True. They're the most interesting actors on that show by a long way. 
Yeah. Because they're energized and they make really great choices. Yeah. Um, I think of that, that um, the older English actor, I think it's just phenomenal. He's on The Crown recently as Mount Batten and he was in Game of Thrones as, um, you know, as the head of oh. the Lannisters. God, he's good. And he's similar to Walken, but it's yeah. very still. But in, everything that's inside him is it's listening. It's like he's on fire. It's like you could either, um, this character could either hug me or could or, or could kill me. And you don't know breath. which. And you don't yeah. know which. And yeah. it's a danger and you're sitting there going, I cannot take my eyes off you. Like yeah. Seymour Hoffman. Like, yeah. um, mm. you know, Walken. Walken's a classic one. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Walken, you know, he's just amazing. So is this an inherent quality in an actor or is that something you can teach? I, I, think, I, think, I think you'd be taught it, yeah. Mm. I, I, well, I think you can. I think it has to be in you, though. I, I really do. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I mean. What I, do you think? I mean, some people possibly are inherently boring. <laughs> no, no, well, <laughs> well, not, you know, but I think yeah, I think you can if, if you of, think about of danger. If, but if you think about I the think. energy that people have at a party when they're on fire, you know, when you're in your true self, maybe mm. you've had a couple of drinks, and you know, like you're there, yeah. that energy. Yeah, you can tap into it. You can tap into yeah. that energy. Yeah. Or when you've had a really great day, or you've had a gym workout, and you're just firing, or whatever, whatever that energy is, it's in there somewhere. Mm. But I don't know if you can. I don't know if you can teach mm. good. Impulses. No, I don't think so. Mm. No. Like good choices. Like yeah. Sometimes some people are just naturals at it. Your talent is your choice. Oh my God, Ray. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's burned. And that's burned into my. Yeah, yeah. Raymond Who's Hawthorne that? used to say that all the time. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Which is cool. I think it's yeah. completely right. It goes back to that that, that's thing also not, that's a stellar. That's actually a stellar Yeah, quote. it goes back to that mm. thing of not indulging. So it doesn't matter what you're going through. It's your choice about it. Yeah. That's the absolutely the audience. Well, and yeah, like you were talking before about. Actors selfishly kind of sitting in yeah. in an emotion or emoting. It's, yeah, like, it's yeah. not about that. It's much more interesting to watch a uh, character in conflict or a, a character trying not to cry, holding back, holding mm. back or, or fighting mm. those urges. Or listening. It's, and listening, just responding truthfully in a, in, mm. in, in a given circumstance. I'm doing too much talking. I'll be quiet now. <laughs> <That's all right. laughs> I'll have another beer. Guys, it has no, that- truly been a pleasure having you in the Reality Hub studios today. I uh, can't thank you enough. And, um, Pleasure, man. Yeah. It's actually I, is, been really cool. Is there yeah, anything yeah. anyone wants to add before we sign off for the uh, – yeah, Any closing episode? comments, thoughts? I'd say thank you for having us. That's yes. been like, oh. really nice. It's been a great chat. Yeah. yeah. Thoroughly enjoyed it's it. Been like thank being, you very much. It's been yes. like being at a cafe just having a chat. <laughs> <laughs> Next Friday? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> what are we talking about next Friday? <laughs> well, guys, uh, thanks for listening. And uh, – Subscribe, rate, review, follow us on Instagram. See what, you around. What was that second word you with, said? Uh, that was a rate. Rate. Yeah, oh, rate. good, because it review. sounded. Shall I say okay. that again? Say yeah. that again, yeah. mate. All right, guys, thanks for listening. Subscribe, rate, and review, and we'll see you at realityhub.love and on next week's episode. He's good at this. Yes. Because it sound. <laughs> that was so fun. I liked hearing what you guys were talking about. Yeah, eh? That's it was just so good. Everyone's to you guys. Yeah.